2015. Can we have the roll call, please? Barbara Brenner. Here. Red Brown. Here. Barry Buchanan. Here. Pete Kremen. Here. Ken Mann. Here. Satpal Sadu. Here. Carl Weimer. Here. People will stand and join me in the flag salute. couple of announcements. If you have your cell phone and you put it on silent, that will uh, keep the racket down to a minimum. Um, and if you're handing out paperwork during any of our hearings or the open session this evening, it's great if um, the, the clerk up front gets a copy of whatever you're handing out also. I also want to put a plug in. We have an opening on the Planning Commission, which is one of our most important um, uh, advisory committees that one deals with all the... Yeah, one of the many, but one of the most important ones, and it's from District 2. So if there's anybody out there that lives in District 2 that's interested in being on the Planning Commission, we'd love to get some applications. We've had the opening for a while and have not received one application. Really? Um, we did have a committee of the whole meeting this afternoon. We had a discussion regarding possible changes to the general areas of responsibility assigned to county council committees in a proposal to rename the council's Public Works Health and Safety <coughs> Committee. In the end, we decided not to make any changes. And we also had a discussion regarding a work assignment proposal for the council's legislative analyst who started yesterday, and we did assign him some work. Um, we have three, three or four public hearings this evening, four public hearings this evening. Um, we're going to move right into those. Uh, the way those operate is each person, when we call the public hearing, can come up and have three minutes to speak to us. When we get down to about 30 seconds, you'll get a warning to let you know your time's about out. If your name is more complicated than Smith or Jones, it's great if you can spell it for us at the, uh, so we get it right in the record. Um, and we're going to just move right into our first public hearing, which is a resolution approving the Whatcom County 2016 Annual Construction Program. I am going to find a sign-up sheet for that one. And it looks like absolutely no one signed up, so it might be a quick hearing. Um, I'm going to open the public hearing anyway because you don't have to sign up to speak. So if anybody wants to come up and speak to us about the 2016 annual construction program, now's the time. Millions and millions of dollars being spent on road projects. Can't talk anybody into it. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. What are the wishes of the council? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move approval but to exclude items R5 and R8 and have those voted on separately. Those are... Could you um, say what they are? That is the Horton CRP 916002 Horton Road Northwest Drive to Old Rich Road New Roadway and CRP 916004 Slater Road Northwest Drive to Old Rich New Roadway. All right, so the motion is to vote on all of the items minus R5 and R8. Correct. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. All right, we have that motion in front of us. Do you want to explain a little bit yeah, why, clarification. Yeah, sorry, why we I, want to I, break I, them up? I, I do not wish to vote on those two. I need to abstain. That's all. Okay. Okay. Okay, so to help Mr. Brown abstain on two items, we're going to break it into... Two things, it'll, we'll still pass the whole resolution, if that's the wishes of the council. Yeah. All right, so we have the first motion that would approve the whole resolution minus R5 and R8. Any discussion? Ms. Brenner. And just for the record, we will be voting on those two right afterwards. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously unanimously. My lips aren't working this evening. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, pass items R5 and R8 and then incorporate the rest of the ones we just passed into the whole resolution. So we, at this time, be approving the whole resolution, including R5 and R8. Second. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Unanimously. And Abstain. One, Passes 6-0 with one abstention, Mr. Brown. Thank you. 
All right, our next public hearing is a resolution regarding Whatcom, Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District six-year water resource improvement program for the years 2016 through 2021. And I think John Hutchings is going to do a very brief staff report on this. We haven't heard, uh, the council hasn't been providing any information about this resolution in particular, although I think we've heard about all the projects in the resolution at various surface water work sessions. Mr. Hutchings. Yes, John Hutchings, Public Works Director, and uh, that's correct. Um, October 8th, uh, Flood Control Zone District Advisory Committee, uh, the uh, October 20th Surface Water Work Session were both opportunities in which uh, your advisory committee and then you as the Board of Supervisors uh, in the, uh, heard about the projects that are uh, in this six-year program uh, in the context of the Flood Control Zone District budget. And uh, keeping in mind that there is uh, next Tuesday another look at, uh, at the longer uh, at the longer term uh, status of the Flood Control Zone District uh, budget and the ending fund balance and the cash flow analysis that are associated with that. Um, I thought what I would do uh, this evening is get, just give you a quick overview of the changes that are that appear in the uh, water resource uh, program for 2016 and beyond. So uh, let me begin by looking at those projects that have that were completed in 2015 and have come off the uh, uh, the water resources improvement program uh, six year list and uh, those include the Academy Road stormwater improvements uh, in the Lake Watkin watershed, uh, the Sea View Hazel Street uh, drainage upgrade up in uh, Birch Bay as part of the uh, BB Warm program. Uh, a number of small works projects that were listed under a, a single line item in that program, in the uh, improvement program, uh, have been replaced by individual projects that were called out as part of the uh, sub watershed planning exercise that uh, the Birch Bay Watershed BB Warm accomplished uh, in 2015. Uh, Canyon Creek, uh, big flood uh, levee project was completed last year. That is no longer. On the, uh, on the program, as well as the Squalicum Creek levee, which was a city of Bellingham uh, levee project that uh, the Flood Control Zone District uh, had, via the uh, Board of Supervisors, had, uh, had uh, financed a portion of uh, some years ago. And then uh, the sediment management pilot, uh, a preliminary SEPA review was accomplished in 2015 and uh, that project, in consultation with the Flood Control Zone District Advisory Committee, uh, their participation and uh, a vote, uh, that project was removed in favor of completing a, an ongoing USGS uh, study having to do with sediment management in the, uh, in the Nooksack watershed. Uh, in terms of new added uh, projects, the uh, levee system repairs at uh, DeBoer, Apple, and Marine Drive, Drive levees that uh, uh, were required, necessitated after the, the uh, win last winter's flooding, are added for 2016. Uh, there is a change in how the Swift Creek, uh, the list of Swift Creek projects is accommodated in this document uh, to clarify uh, the work program. Now, of course, the dollars associated with that are, are contingent on state and federal uh, commitments uh, before anything can be spent there, and I certainly don't expect that to happen uh, in 2016, although because it's contingent on the, uh, the creation of a legal entity, a trust in which to manage this, uh, uh, this situation up at Swift Creek. Uh, there's a, uh, an addition of the Ferndale Levy uh, Improvement Project, something that was in the existing uh, Comprehensive Flood Hazard uh, Management Program, and part of the the uh, SWIFT or um, system-wide improvement framework that the advisory committee has been working on this last year. And uh, that has, uh, that particular levy actually has some substantial uh, deficiencies that uh, concern uh, the city of Ferndale and concern the Corps of Engineers, of course, having that in the core program. So that's something that has been added uh, for work in 2017 or 2018. It's, it's uh, lined out for 2017 project. Um, but we'll need some additional funding attached to it from outside sources. A couple of other minor changes. 
um, High Creek, which is a, uh, a commitment that the county has uh, borne for, for quite a number of years and requires uh, a fair amount of investment to uh, remedy a flooding problem uh, associated with that creek uh, up in the North County uh, has been pushed back one year to accommodate the permitting, make sure we get that permitting work done before we come to you and ask for the, uh, the financing. So if my staff are ready to construct that in 2016, we'll come and look for a supplemental so we can have the financing discussion then uh, when they're prepared. And the same thing with uh, Jones Creek. That was pushed back one year to accommodate those repair projects that I spoke to you about earlier. So those were unprogrammed repairs that, uh, that need to be done. And as a result, there's other work that has to get bumped in order to accom accommodate that. Uh, three, other uh, three other changes, a Cottonwood Drive project, which is a, uh, another Birch Bay project. Uh, in the aftermath of the uh, sub-watershed planning process, uh, that was phased and uh, for a portion of it to be constructed in 17 and then uh, other portions beyond 2017 instead of doing it all in one project. It was uh, made more sense to the uh, Birch Bay uh, folks to, to phase that project. And the same thing goes for the Harbor View dr uh, Drive drainage improvements uh, that are phased now for 2018 and 2019 construction instead of all being uh, budgeted in one year. Uh, that, together with some minor changes in uh, project titles, is in summary what you see in that, uh, in that program for 2016 and beyond. Um, I guess I, I should just recap by saying those things that have any budget uh, implications for 2016 include uh, the levy system repairs uh, on, on the Nooksack, for which the Advisory C Committee and the Board of Supervisors have already looked at in some detail, uh, the conversation about the Swift Creek Repository site that has, uh, has no budget implications that are different than uh, what, are, what you approved going into last year, and then pushing back High Creek by one year and Jones Creek by one year. That's the summary. All right. Any questions? Mr. Sidhu. Uh, this has come to my notice. Uh, or from the public that, you know, the flood control funds are used for water quality. As I understand that it's a state statute that those funds are combined. We still call it flood control funds, and people are confused, and statements were made that the fund is being abused for other purposes. I think for clarification, uh, Maybe we should add some wording into that in future or at some appropriate time that it reflects that this is not only flood control, it is water quality as well. I would be happy to have more conversations with you about that, and it's something that we've heard over the years and, and probably deserves uh, looking at again. Okay. All right. I'm going to think no other questions. We're going to open the public hearing. So if there's anybody that wants to speak to us about the resolution regarding the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District six-year water resource improvement program for years 2016 through 2021, now is the time. No one signed up. We're having this hearing with uh, acting as the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors. No one cares about roads. No one cares about floods, flooding. We like it. All right. We're going to close the public hearing. What is the wishes of the council? Ms. Brenner. So, uh, a motion I, first I'll move we have approval. A okay, it's been moved for approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, where would would hmm. the would budget money for the planning unit be appropriate? Would it be in within this fund or within the? I can take a crack at that if you don't want to walk down. Oh, he wants to walk down. You need the exercise. <laughs> I think we've introdu we're introducing tonight the one-year flood control thing that includes the programmatic money also. So at yeah. our next meeting, we'd be talking about things like facilitation for the planning unit and those types Okay, of but if we do talk, because it seemed to me when we were talking about this today, we don't have those things on there for next time. We can't do anything about it. I think we can, but the administration wouldn't think we can 
you know, we're not allowed to put something in there. It would have to come from the administration. You mean at our next meeting when we take up that? Yeah. I think we can change it however we want at our next meeting. And we could put it off for two more weeks after that? You can. Okay. Fine. Uh-oh. Tyler Schroeder, Walking County Executive's Office. Was your question to two more weeks on the budget decisions and discussions that we had this morning or on a planning unit inclusion of budget authorization? Uh, budget for the planning unit, okay. an amount. Okay. So that could be in there, right? It, it could be. Okay. There's a November 17th surface water work session in which there will be some discussion okay. on flood Perfect. projections. That's right. I think that's a really good opportunity for that discussion to happen. And then we can follow up on the 24th. Right? Okay. We can add stuff on the 24th if we want. All right. Any other questions? Did I cl close the public hearing? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. You have a motion. Moved and seconded. Seeing no other questions, I think we're ready for the roll call. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Seth Paul Sidhu? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. That passes unanimously. On to our third hearing, which is a resolution amending the bylaws of the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors. And this, again, we are acting as the Whatcom County Flood Control District Board of Supervisors. I think we've heard about this one, so we're going to skip the staff report and go right into the public hearing. So I'm going to open the public hearing. Um, and it looks like there is one person who has signed up. I think it's, boy, I'm having a hard time reading it. Ennis Burek. Anybody that wants to talk to us about the bylaws of the Flood Control Zone District? <laughs> Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. What are the wishes of the council? Move, move approval. Second. It's moved and seconded. I mean, the wishes of the District Board of Supervisors. All right. Any discussion? Ms. Brenner. Well, just, I mean, we're acting like we're going through things so fast. This one especially, this is just tweaking the language so that we ensure we have our our annual budget instead of biannual and sort of annual. So. Right, it's clarification. Yeah. All right, it's been moved and seconded. We are ready for the roll call. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Paul Sidhu? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Carl <clears throat> Brenner? Yes. That passes unanimously. And our last hearing this evening is an ordinance amending the Whatcom County Code Title 20 in the Whatcom County Comprehensive Plan related to development regulations in limited areas of more intensive rural development. And we have a brief staff report to begin this. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kerry Davis, Whatcom County Planning and Development Services. This is uh, proposed amendments to the zoning code and the comprehensive plan. This is the result of a settlement agreement that uh, the council entered into earlier this year dealing with the rural element uh, issues. Of all the many rural element issues, uh, there were only three remain, and this would take care of two of them. Uh, the last issue uh, would be the water resources issue, which of course just went to the Supreme Court for oral hearings uh, last month, and we don't have a date on when we would expect a decision on that. But for the two that we can take care of right now, just to uh, remind everybody what the hearings board decision was on that, uh, the council had adopted a size and use table in type one Lamards in 2081, excuse me, yeah, 2081. Uh, the hearings board said that that table was GMA compliant. It's consistent, it keeps development consistent with the character of the area in 1990. However, the hearings board said that exceptions that were placed in the code after that chart, exceptions to that, the sizes and uses in that chart, uh, were not GMA compliant. That's issue number one here tonight. Issue number two was there were two Lammert boundaries that were found to be out of compliance because a couple of properties uh, didn't meet the criteria uh, for being in the Lammert. So under the settlement agreement terms, the county would consider um, removing those exceptions to the size and use table in uh, 2080-100-2. Uh, and also, in, if that happens, then the county 
uh, keeps the Lammert boundaries as they were approved. And those are the uh, Smith and Guide Meridian and the Birch Bay Linden and Valley View uh, Lammerts. The zoning code amendment would, as I said, uh, the main part of this is that it would delete the current exceptions to the size use table in 2080-102. And it would substitute for that in only one exception, and that would be to have an allowance for a larger public community facility than allowed in, than allowed in the table. And a public con uh, community facility would be a fire station, a school, some public use, that may need to be expanded to serve the, uh, the rural area. There were a few additional uh, items that were placed in the, in the amendments to the code as well at the time to take care of some kind of house cleaning type things. Um, to add type headings to administrative approval uses to the size and use table in one zoning code chapter. To correct a typo in 2080 103. Um, and to correct square footage on the chart for uh, sizes in the Sudden Valley Lammert. There were a couple of other um, items that were uh, kind of house clean cleaning items that uh, FutureWise had commented just before the, the Planning Commission hearing that they had some objections to. So when it went to the uh, Council on the 27th of October, uh, a new version of the draft was substituted. And, um, and then we, uh, and so that was introduced in planning for a, plan a public hearing tonight. However, yesterday, I just got a couple more comments from FutureWise on some new issues, uh, which are very similar. Uh, they're not the, uh, they're not critical issues to the, to the settlement. They were kind of the house cleaning issues that we were trying to put in to uh, take care of some possible uh, confusion. But uh, we can certainly live without those too. So situation we've got right now is uh, we'd like to introduce a new ordinance which uh, removes the situation which removes uh, changes to chapters 2063 and 2064 and uh, so the plan I believe is to have a public hearing tonight introduce this new ordinance uh, draft which I've supplied to the to the clerk public will have a couple of weeks to look that over and then on the 24th we can have another public hearing and possible adoption then Okay, so let me make let me make sure I'm clear on this. Okay. Uh, so the staff recommendation is that we go ahead with the public hearing that's already been scheduled, Correct. but that the council does not pass this ordinance that's before us this evening. We introduce a new introduce a replacement ordinance, and then in two weeks we'll have another public hearing, and perhaps that day in planning we can go through the changes so we really know what future wise has changed this time. Correct. All right. Any questions about that, Ms. Brenner? I know we're going to have another time, but since you brought it up about these new potential changes from FutureWise, would you call them Scriveners? No, they're not Scriveners errors. There are things that uh, when we looked over the code, when staff looked over the code changes that were made, um, we said, well, there's a couple of things that are kind of redundant That's here. That's all I need to know. Yeah. yeah. It okay. does, again, it doesn't have anything to do with the, the content of the, of the uh, settlement agreement. All right. Thank you for that. Sure, Mr. Mann. So what would happen if we just went ahead and, and passed the one that we recommended approval in committee? Futurewise has a couple of issues with that, but I mean, it doesn't ruin the settlement agreement? I don't know. I, I can't really answer that. You might uh, check with your counsel here. Well, I can't speak for what FutureWise might do, but it's possible that they could appeal those changes to the board and we could have a whole new case. So it sounds like they're minor changes and we may be better off just doing it in two weeks than finding out. All right. Ms. Brenner. Or not. Or not. But let's find out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to open the public hearing on the ordinance amending Whatcom County Code Title 20 in the Whatcom County Comprehensive Plan related to the development regulations in limited areas of more intensive rural development. That is a mouthful. Anybody want to speak to this? No one signed up. Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. What are the wishes of the council? No one wishes to pass this this evening. All right. I'll move I thought, approval. I thought we're not going to pass it this evening. I'll move approval. Okay. 
Is there a second? A second. And, okay. It's been moved and seconded. Now we can uh, vote for or against it. No. Well, you can talk about it, Ms. Brenner. Oh, yeah, we talk now before we yeah. vote. Okay. Um, Gary, you may need to. I've got a real concern that <laughs> we may be really cutting into our ability to do an adequate size grocery store in the East County. And I looked at the different um, rural communities that we have, and, um, you know, a decent-sized uh, grocery store that would would be big enough that it would allow them to purchase quantities that would make it more affordable for them to buy out there rather than coming all the way into town. Um, it has to be a certain size. These all look very tiny for a, a decent-sized grocery. And then Dotson's wanting to expand theirs, which we've had a big problem with over and over. So is this going to tie our hands on that? Um, not any more than than uh, the code already does. No, nothing changes that situation. Well, we, do have, we do have um, some general commercial zoning in the Columbia Valley UGA, and that allows uh, building sizes for commercial development of, I believe, up to 35,000. Okay, what, oh, that's good. What's the zoning at Dodson's? That is, well, that's in a Type 1 Lamert, so that's subject yeah. to that 1990 uh, requirement. I believe that's... Uh, it's either small town commercial or, or uh, rural general commercial. I forget offhand. But they would be, they would be uh, subject to the 1990 building requirements or size requirements that are in that table. Well, this makes me very concerned one. because we we allowed some wiggle room in that that if you you could have an exception if it was of the same type or you know size or type or. Right fit into the community. Right, and those now, are the exceptions that would, would go away. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with that. It, you know, it seems like I'm, I'm totally, I want to get this over with, I want to get the negotiations done, I want to be done with it, but if we don't have decent sized grocery stores out there, we are completely defeating our whole purpose of ensuring that people aren't driving all over the county. I mean, if we could have done it over, we probably wouldn't have done what we did out there, but we did it. And I just, I'm not, did anybody bring that up to Future Wise when we were in the negotiations, that specific issue of a decent size for a grocery store? I mean, they're the ones that are always touting, you know, we have to make it so people don't have to travel and they, they can do things locally and all this stuff. So. Did, was that ever raised? Because the way it was before we did that, before this <coughs> came up, we could we could do it. Well, I I'm not so sure that that is accurate because before it, even with the exception, you still had to show that it was consistent with the 1990 environment, and. I think that would have been a hard thing to show, even with that exception. Mm. And that, well, I mean, I, I think it says it didn't say environment. It said all those things, and it could be or, 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 not and, and, and. So it was, and one of those was about uh, c consistent with the character. So right, but somebody would have it, had to go through it. still our, had to be consistent right. with the 1990 environment based on these various considerations. Not, I mean, I, I have just a little different recollection. Right. I think we've kind of been through this issue yeah. for quite a while, and if, if that's a concern of yours, you should vote no on this ordinance right now. I don't think we're voting on it right now, are we? Yeah, it's been moved and seconded. But I thought we were going to... Uh, well, you seconded it to bring it up. But, yeah, I thought we were going to hold it. For That's two what... Then why... I, I moved the table, Mr. Chair. Well, let people... Did people... You already did All that. All right. Okay. There's a motion to table. I want to vote. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Okay, that's fine. Does it matter whether we table it or we just reject it this evening, vote no on it, and either way works, doesn't it? Okay. Well... So, but the motion is to table, and I think that takes precedence. It takes precedence, and it was the shortest way possible. Yeah, and also, 
Well, there's a motion to table. That's where we... Well, we can say a few little things. I did look at that, that facilitator when she talked about the rules, and it's not like you can't... Nobody can say a word. You can say a few little things. Little things just ran out. This is, <laughs> this is very little. <laughs> Tabling is better because then we can vote. If we reject it, we have to bring the whole thing back. Oh, we're doing that anyway. We have to reintroduce a new one. We're introducing Not a new ordinance this evening. Point, yeah, point. along with this one. So there will be two of them that we can. Uh, the, but this would already have had the We hearing. don't have to bring this one back. Oh, okay, the motion is to table. Mr. Brown, are you talking so, about so the tabling? Mr. Chair is right. It's a lemon, so you can only talk about little things. All right. Okay. Um, I just like uh, uh, Mr. Davis. Just one question. You talked about a thirty-five thousand square foot limit. Doesn't this the, the, the motion to table, table. We're, we're supposed to cut off the base until unless we vote not to table, and then we can continue the discussion. All right. All those in favor of tabling, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, tabling passes to to five to two, I believe, with council members Brenner and uh, you know, yes. Brenner and okay. Mann in favor. By the way, for, for accuracy, you do have to table to a date certain that will table indefinitely. Well, it's already passed. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's the correct procedure. Yeah. You have to table it until a certain point. You have to define when it's time. Table for two weeks. Well, then we'd be discussing it again in two weeks. Well, we don't have we to. to. Yeah, we don't have to. Discuss. We want to put this one to bed. I would have then just voted it down. Vote for table for it. two years. <laughs> Very funny. Move the table indefinitely. Yeah, uh, I will table indefinitely. Okay, so the new motion yes. is to table indefinitely. Everybody clear? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. So that passes six to one with Councilmember Mann opposed. All right. Are we done with that now? I'm confused. I guess we are. All right. We're going to move on to our open session where anybody can come up and tell us anything they want about how we operate this organization. Be careful what you ask for. So the way this works is the same as the public hearings. People will get three minutes. You'll get a warning at 30 seconds. Um, and I'm going to open it up, and people can just come down front. Both microphones work. And as you come up, if, again, if your name is complicated, please spell it for us. Ms. Harris. Wendy Harris. <coughs> I'm here tonight to talk about the Wildlife Committee. Um, at your last session, um, the council appointed me to the Wildlife Committee as a stakeholder position, and I wanted to thank you for your confidence in me. I appreciate it. You know, this is um, an issue that's very near and dear to my heart. And we had our first meeting, and I attended, and um, the next thing that's going to happen is um, the technical members, um, which are almost all the members, are going to um, meet and start going over information um, and studies and data that's been done to see um, what information exists and what data gaps exist in terms of trying to figure out um, where we can place habitat corridors. And um, I asked to be allowed to participate in that process, and I was told I couldn't um, because I wasn't a technical um, member. And um, when I applied for this committee, I did ask to be a technical member, and uh, my application wasn't brought forward for full consideration of the council. So um, because, and you know, when I heard you appointed me, as a stakeholder, that was great, but now it appears that it is going to affect the type and the nature of the work that I can do, and I do have a background in this. Um, I've worked on um, habitat corridors and um, 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 mitigation programs, um, including, you know, I've, I've um, worked on the, um, the in lieu of fee off-site wetland mitigation program. Um, that the county developed um, for stormwater, um, and um, that didn't ultimately move forward. I've also worked on um, with the um, Washington State um, Conservation and Recreation Office. I was a member of a, um, a citizen group that reviewed um, 
urban wildlife projects and we, for the purpose of, of rating grants, and we looked at, you know, different functions and, and what was being done and we determined, we helped determine who the RCO office would fund. Um, and you also know from my other comments and, and letters that, um, you know, I, I studied quite a bit and I know quite a bit about this. And I also bring something unusual to this commit, to the work that's seconds, being done, please. which is, um, I follow council business and I know what's happening and what some of the issues are um, in terms of on the ground, which people that are more academic wouldn't. So I'm bringing both those things together. So I'd ask that tonight you would just reassign me from a stakeholder member to a technical member so that you know I can participate and help you know develop the policies moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to this council for having instituted the Incarceration Reduction and Pre Prevention Task Force. Name? Oh, sorry, Joy Gilfellan, Whatcom County. Um, I think the task force has been doing some pretty amazing work in the last few weeks, and I'm very, very hopeful that that task force will be responsible for bringing some really productive issues forward for the incarceration and jail issue and I stand here as president of the restorative community coalition and my absolute commitment to this county is to help us do jail reform and I'm more than willing to serve in any way that uh, this council could use our skill set and to bring forward the work that we've been doing for the last five years deeply and for since 2004 but I thank you very much um, for the work that you all are doing this is a big project Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Irene Morgan. Um, I'm founder of the Restorative Community Coalition, and we at the coalition were told to, to uh, the, um, that the de uh, sorry, let me start over. We were told at the coalition that the jail was a done deal, that we needed to stand down and not oppose the jail or the sales tax, that we were wasting our time. I feel vindicated that we wasted so many people's time. We did oppose the jail. We did oppose the jail tax. And look what happened. It didn't pass. I'd like to thank everyone who voted against the jail tax. I'd especially like to thank Councilmember Mann, Councilmember Weimer, and Councilmember Buchanan for courageously speaking up, standing up, and continually voicing questions about the proposed jail. I'd like to thank those on the council who voted to implement the Incarceration Prevention and Reduction Task Force. I so much appreciate being appointed to that task force as I am seeing great possibilities from the group. In my opinion, the potential to truly have a just system in meeting the needs of our system, uh, our citizens and a safer community is actually attainable. We can do better than the status quo. We do not need to overcrowd the present jail. We can do as other counties do in our state already and reduce the crisis, reduce the population to give us time to do a full needs assessment and provide a jail that is appropriate and safe. When alternatives to jail are practiced, a smaller sized jail will be evident. I have great hope for our future. We have a great community with visionaries, inventive minds, community groups and nonprofits that do awesome work within our county and they need to be expanded. Let's pool our ideas and fashion a system that actually supports our citizens, all of them, from the poorest to the most wealthy. What's lurking out there, just, outside, uh, just out of sight? What else what we, might we do? What else might we know? 30 Remember, seconds, please. computers, just a few decades ago, were only a figment of someone's imagination. What else is possible? What else is out there? As I've said before, I have great hope for our future. The Restorative Communi uh, Community Coalition 
invites all of you Wednesday, November 18, 5.30 at Garden Street Methodist Church to share your ideas and visions, expectations for our future. At the task force, Mr. Mann Time. has asked us to share our dreams and visions. Let's do it. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Clayton Petrie. I live in Bellingham, and uh, that jail issue is going to be fun one to solve over time. But I think it's it's nice that we kind of get a little reset and uh, get to fix some of the thing, things that I think a lot of citizens were concerned about. What I'm here tonight about um, is uh, we we I the other day I came in uh, a few meetings ago and gave you and spoke to you about a settlement proposal that had been submitted to you uh, regarding the U Street area. And uh, we did get the time extension that I mentioned, and that gives us a little more time to talk about um, what to do with this Growth Management Hearings Board case. As I mentioned before, um, nobody really would like to go do the briefing and, and all that you know, hard work that that, that kind of thing takes. And uh, so mostly, I don't, I don't know if you get these kinds, kinds of updates, but there's, um, you can see there's a schedule on here, and basically we have um, through January to, to talk about all this and hopefully come to some sort of um, agreement on, on this 2009 action. So um, I would encourage you to speak, oh, she left now, but uh, to your legal staff at some point um, in the, you know, coming month or so and uh, see if we can wrap this up um, efficiently and at a low cost as opposed to moving forward. Um, as I mentioned before, I think Carl was busy at the White House, so he might have missed this, but um, it, 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 it's not something I think that really needs to have a, a ton of time or money spent on. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions, that um, you'd like answered, uh, you know, feel free to, you know, call or email or, or whatever. And uh, so I mostly just wanted to make sure you knew that we got more time to talk about this. And this is probably the last one that we can obtain. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Um, my name is Steve Jordan. I'm a Sumas City City Planner. Um, I had a question about uh, putting my name in for the open seat for the county planning, if it would require me to vacate the position that I hold, or if I could uh, hold on to it until my term is over. Oh, your position with Sumas? Correct. I'm if not sure I know the exact answer. I don't think it would require you to vacate that. You might have to abstain from votes if it was specific to Sue Mass. All right. I'm, they're conferring. Is that what I said? Just to, to, We'd have to look into it. But if you want to leave your uh, contact information with the clerk, I'd be glad to get back to you and give you an answer on that. All right. Thank I have you. a question. Ms. Brenner? Um, you are a city planner. Do you live in the second district? You betcha. CMS, okay. CMS is in the second district, I do believe. I think yes. It's, yeah. As North County as you can get. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, some people work places, but they don't live there, so I just wanted to be sure. Uh, well, I don't work right now. I'm a, a civil engineering student at BTC. Oh. So. No, but I think your question is where do you reside? In CMS. In CMS. Okay. Proper. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Can I ask a question? Sure. I thought you said you were a city planner. Does, yes. yeah. I thought that meant you were employed by the city of Sumas as a, no. in the planning department. No, that is uh, a that? position uh, working underneath the mayor as a uh, person that lives in the city as a citizen, civil serving, non paid. So it's a volunteer position. Yeah, that's okay. So and I've done that for the last eight years, nine years. So I'm, I'm sure you don't have a problem then no if it's not a paid position. Oh, no. All right. So Thank apply, you. please. Maybe not even if it was, but it's not. So. All right. Anybody else for open session? Seeing no one, we're going to close the open session and move on to our regular business.
First is the consent agenda from the Finance and Administrative Services Committee. Mr. Chairman, the Finance and Administrative Services Committee met today uh, and the first item on the consent, there were two items on the consent agenda. Uh, the first item was held in committee and I'd like to come back to that one. The second item was approved with a vote of 3-0 and I so move approval. All right, so we're only voting on item number two. Uh, and uh, do you want me to read that out? Uh, not as part of the consent agenda. No. Any discussion on this? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Number two passes unanimously. So, Mr. Chair, number one was held in committee, and I think um, the, uh, I'm not sure what the will of the council is, uh, whether we need to provide further guidance to the county staff or whether we just hold this in committee um, until the committee decides to make it forward. Okay, yeah, and I had some questions about that, so I'm glad you brought it forward because I see we have both PDS and uh, public works here. And my understanding, I, I think I understand why the committee held it because it was, there was a cost overrun that there was concerns about that issue. But I also n personally understand that, uh, you know, this coordinated water system plan, at some point we need to get it completed because it ties into our bigger comprehensive plan effort. So if we don't have a plan to move this forward in one way or another, we're kind of messing with ourselves for accomplishing the comprehensive plan. And I don't know if either Public Works or, or Planning wants to talk to us about maybe the, uh, the issues if we delay this too long. And, and, and maybe the, the Administrative Services Committee could talk about whether it really was a discussion about purchasing and why we don't track things better and discuss things with the Council earlier or whether it was really about this contract. So I think the frustration yeah. was that we have a, we're being asked for a 25% uh, increase in the contract for, uh, and the basis given for it is that the public process has gone longer than expected. I think my personal challenge, the other members can speak for themselves, was what the person's effectively asking for is an additional seven weeks of time at $200 an hour. And that's, I have to find a bit of a struggle with that, that, that the public process is overrun to a degree that's generated that. I, the, the further challenge I have is in, in when I was running my business, the expectation was is if you're going to go over, if you're going to go over budget, you made that known early before the budget was consumed to give um, uh, management an opportunity to perhaps suggest, address whether there was options to change the, the project to still stay within budget. And I'm, I personally was a bit frustrated to be asked to vote on this after the, all the money had been spent. Mr. Personius. Good evening, Council. Mark Personius with PDS. I'll just address the, uh, the Chair's question about timing. Um, so, uh, as I understand it, the current schedule is for Council to get the CWSP, the Coordinated Water System Plan, around February, uh, after we've uh, completed the uh, review and approval process with the WUC, that is the Water Utility Coordinating Committee. Um, and then it would go after your approval, then it would go to the Department, State Department of Health for their um, official approval, and then it's, and then it's final. Um, so in terms of where that fits into the comp plan, the comp plan, of course, is due June 30th of next year. So our thinking is that it would be give us time to integrate. If we needed to integrate anything into the comp plan, uh, we would have some a few months to do that if it came, comes to you first in, in uh, February, we'd have some time before uh, the final comp plan is due in, by the end of June. We will bring the comp plan to you, and we're anticipating right now bringing it to you in January and start your review. And probably like we did with the Planning Commission, we'll do it in chapters and in individual briefings um, to the committees, probably to, to, to planning and development, to natural resources, to finance, and to public work, depending on the nature of the particular uh, chapters of the comp plan. So um, we anticipate that um, uh, the CWSP is integrated in, in, in Chapter 5 in utilities, and it's also in uh, referenced in Chapter 11, the natural environment, where we talk about water resources. So there's a variety of different opportunities you'd have to talk about. All right, so it sounds if we delay too long, that could push back 
the review of those chapters anyway? It could, yeah. Okay. And I guess the question for Public Works was, did the consultants let you know that they were out of money before they ran out of money? Yes, I, the, uh, John Hutchings, Public Works Director. Um, I would like to address uh, Councilmember Brown's observation uh, by recognizing that uh, I own the, the uh, question of uh, the timely, uh, timely uh, informing of uh, the Council. And uh, for that, we will, uh, we will take some steps to ensure that that doesn't happen again. Um, that said, of course, that uh, this, this conversation about the, uh, the Water Utilities Coordinating Committee and its uh, body of work uh, were regularly uh, briefed at your month monthly uh, surface water work sessions. And uh, at the last surface water work session, which I will acknowledge is not uh, as timely as probably ought be, uh, the uh, recognition that the existing budget w was not going to go far enough uh, was, was made public at that time. Uh, it did not include an amount. And uh, obviously that's a big issue um, that we need to get around. Um, just in the way of, uh, uh, well, first of all, I don't intend to, uh, to press uh, the council to, to change its decision one way or the other, but perhaps uh, a little bit more background would be uh, of some utility as you think about how to proceed. Um, this, uh, this body of, of people from, uh, from the small cities, the city of Bellingham, the uh, small water, uh, the water districts, uh, the small uh, water service providers uh, around the county have held over 20 public meetings to date. And uh, three additional meetings are certainly required. Uh, the, uh, the additional budget authority uh, contemplates a uh, supplemental uh, supplemental uh, contingency meeting if that becomes necessary. Uh, the work that needs to get done uh, going forward are to write the two last chapters, the executive summary, uh, to uh, combine all of those, uh, th that work into a formal document uh, that will come to you in a uh, presentation to the council as well as a, a presentation at a public hearing. And uh, that's the body of work that is yet to be done. And that is lined out, I believe, on page 10 of your packet, uh, where there's a list, a line item list, of the uh, estimated uh, time remaining uh, to complete the various sections of the contract and uh, the estimated expenses. And uh, there's some notes about uh, the use of uh, some contingency funds and that sort of thing. But. Uh, I guess the bottom line is that uh, there has been a considerable amount of, of community involvement, a community momentum that has been built into this, uh, this exercise. And uh, uh, stalling it does, does uh, create some, send some kind of message. Uh, I'm not certain that stalling it by two weeks will have any effect at all. Um, I guess what I would like is to uh, have the opportunity uh, to work with, with you, uh, uh, not now, but uh, rather in the interim if you choose to, uh, uh, to delay this, uh, to come up with some ideas about how we might move it off center uh, in an appropriate way that recognizes the needs of the council. Mr. Mann. So could you elaborate a little bit more on the genesis of this cost overrun, and as Mr. Brown mentioned, you know, and, and, and if I get a, in my line of work, if I get a bid on a project, unless there's an extraordinary circumstance that was unpredictable through, you know, throughout the bid process, they have to stick to their bid. So what, what came up in this public outreach process that was not foreseeable that they have to add $53,000? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's important to recognize that, uh, that uh, professional services contracts are not bid. They're awarded based on the competency of the ability of the uh, professional service provider to perform. And the selection uh, process is lined out in the RCWs and they recognize very clearly that it is not cost that is the driver, it's rather uh, whether which of the uh, respondents is best suited. And uh, the, in fact, it's very explicit that it's not a cost basis contract. And uh, the conversation about cost only comes after selection of the best uh, respondent is made. 
then there is a negotiation over price, and there's an opportunity there if, uh, if the price is uh, considered unreasonable to uh, scrap the whole thing and go back and start over. In this case, there was one respondent uh, to, the, uh, to the call for proposals. Uh, partially, that was because, well, I won't go into perhaps why that was, but uh, suffice it to say that I think it took uh, upwards of six appearances before the council in order for us to get this off center. And that, that's no reflection on the council. Rather, the issues of the day made it difficult to get for us collectively to get our arms around moving this coordinated water system planning uh, process forward. So the, uh, the question about what specifically uh, were unanticipated costs associated with the prosecution of this contract, they're listed under background and purpose on page 7 of the uh, packet. And uh, Gary Stoika can go into some more detail if you wish, but for, uh, uh, for immediate purposes, uh, the number of subcommittee meetings required to complete the design standards, fire flow, and utility service review procedures uh, was, uh, were substantially more than uh, originally contemplated. The need for additional county coordination meetings, that is staff level uh, meetings following these public meetings, uh, a rewrite of the coordinated water system plan process, a more extensive analysis of water rights, and a more extensive rewrite of the design standard fire flow section. Those all conspired to create more cost than was originally scoped. And again, I, I shoulder the responsibility of making sure that the council and, and the executive and then the council are duly aware of the changes in scope as they come forward. And uh, we didn't do a good enough job of making sure that happened. Follow up? Just to follow up, so regardless of the timing, I, I appreciate your comments on that. But when you say, the scope was not anticipated or underestimated. Who did that? Was that was that the county public works department just underestimated the, the scope that it was going to take or the extent of the rewrite and the fire flow and these things were? So typically when a, a, a professional service contract is rendered, a, uh, the prospective service provider consultant will sit down with the staff and they will they will finalize a and agree negotiate a scope of work that that seems consistent with the body of work that they're being asked to do and uh, ultimately the county my staff and myself have the the uh, the ability to uh, frame up that scope and then of course it comes back to the council for a final decision a final look to be sure that that scope uh, is consistent with your uh, intentions, and uh, that's the process. And I just, before we go on questions, just as the, the council's uh, representative on the Water Utilities Coordinating Council, um, you know, early on, I, I've been pretty impressed with these consultants and the, the work they've done to move the process along working with a big room full of people on water issues. <laughs> um, but some of the early things are certainly, you know, any time, and we experienced it ourselves when you start talking about fire flow issues, it sounds like an interesting thing, or easy thing on paper until you get into the specifics of it and it gets fairly complicated. And the other thing that I think I was the one that raised was this uh, more extensive review of uh, water rights because if we don't know who has legal water, we can't really decide how to apportion it. And the, the original plan wasn't to take a very deep look at who had legal water versus who was just using water. Um, so that, that was something that, uh, you know, I was the one that raised that and probably caused them to rethink that versus the way they did it. Ms. Brenner. Um, I just want to make sure I, it happened. You know, we got to move on, and I'm going to support it. But... Did they go over their allotted budget before they came to Public Works? No, no, okay. we were involved in this conversation at each and every meeting along the way. So, so okay. we own some of this, yeah. Mr. Kremen. Thank you. Um, appreciate the explanation. And I understand and, and realize that you know, these things are difficult and they're hard to pinpoint especially up front. Um, it's impossible. It's very hard to do it under any circumstances. But I guess my question is, is there any way that, that this can be completed without 
the contractor. Choice, but right he already did the work. So. Uh, Contractor. I thought you did Okay. So the answer to your question is no, and here's why. Uh, a good portion of the work that is done uh, in support of this coordinated water system plan update has to do with design standards for water systems. The, the county, as you well know, doesn't provide uh, water utility services. We don't retain people with that level of knowledge. One of the uh, engineers that works for RH2 on this particular uh, exercise is a water utility engineer who knows about fire flows and design standards. Thank you. Ms. Brenner. Well, it was my understanding the work was already done. And we're, they're get, we're getting this extra bill, but the work was already. I read somewhere in here that yeah, the, so the, the extra meetings were already held. The right, the extra meetings were held to uh, accommodate the the development of those sections. Those need to be finished, and then they need to be brought for a presentation, a public conversation about what's in them, and that as well will require the presence of those people who know about that stuff because the people that are going to be listening to this are other water utility people other small water systems and water districts around the county so it's partly that some of the work that's in this extra charge has been done and then the other part is they need to finish because they've got the engineering uh, credentials and ability is that am I understanding it right I believe so <laughs> if I understood you right Mr. Brown. So on page 10, you say this is an estimated additional expense of $53,751. Does that mean there could, there's an opportunity for a third ask? Um, I'm both happy and somewhat distraught that you asked that question at this particular point in time, but it, it's a good one. And uh, the truth is that, you know, we could very well bring this, roll this out for public consumption and uh, get a, a response from the community that could, could possibly take us in a different direction. And when I say us, I mean us as a county. I mean, obviously, at this point, you've got my commitment that any whiff of a change in direction that comes forward, you will hear about in advance. So, so, so to be clear, though, I, I understand the need to to pay additional money if the scope of work changes at our request. But based on the original scope of work that was is issued, what is the chance of them coming back and saying, you know what, we thought we could do it for 53, but we need 73? Well, we will be involved day to day in the, just as we have in the past, in the, you know, the prosecution of the contract, so we will know. So as the answer is yes, they could come back and ask for us to do what we originally asked. Well, if, I suppose they could, but the, the answer is no. That is not going to happen, and I'm confident about that. Mr. Sidhu. I think this whole thing reminds me that you take your car to the shop, and for one defect, <laughs> they open it up, and there are other things. Like I said earlier in the day, it's the value received. I think that the biggest thing is we want the staff to be cautioned I think that's one of the lessons we are all learning, both sides, that if something like this happens, ask the mechanic that, okay, it's going to be another $500 on the bill, rather than he goes in and fixes it and then gives you bill, and you look at it, it's $500 too much, that what you started with. I think that's the shock we had, because we get only very small snapshot in these things. You guys deal with it every day or regular basis, so you may know that, but that's the lesson I see from here is, is that keeping communication open and informing us of what is going on, especially if it's that substantial. That lesson is well learned. Thank you. 
And as someone that's been involved, I would just disagree a, w a little bit with your car shop analogy because <laughs> that analogy implies that the uh, mechanic was finding things to charge more money for where this was a public process where the public involved demanded more things from no. this group. What I meant was the value received. If we got a better report for that money, which was needed to be done anyways, maybe if we didn't pay that money, we couldn't have gotten a better report. So I support that the, if we received that value, public received that value, it, it's fine, but it's the process of doing it. Mr. Kremen. I think in the future, it, it might be wise to uh, have a fixed amount of money when we when we embark on some exercise like this, when we update a plan or something similar, because when you take a look at, if someone were to tell you how much it's going to cost to update the uh, the coordinated water system plan, and the response would be, oh, a little over a quarter million dollars, and I'm not even including. How about staff time? that we've included as well. I mean, it, we just need to be more mindful of, of the costs. As I, as I stated earlier today, it, you know, the, the, public, the public gets it, the, and, and this is one of the reasons why it's very difficult to get support to fund any worthwhile endeavor. Uh, it, it, I mean, we, we have not been good stewards of, of the taxpayers' dollars. Um, and and on, the, on, the, on the other side, to be fair, uh, it, it is more intricate, it's more complex, and more labor-intensive than most would think. But still, I mean, you're all professionals. You know, the administration are top-notch professionals in their fields, you know, the county council, fairly uh, knowledgeable about these kinds of issues as well. We have, you know, a collective uh, amount of experience that you would think would be able to avoid these kinds of situations. But so I think in the future, <clears throat> it's just better to maybe have a fixed amount and say, we have to get this, this task has to be accomplished. And as soon as these dollars run out, that's it. And so it, it kind of, and it also will, I think, give us a leg up for contractors that, that might tend to benefit by having an elongated process. Uh, there should not be a reward for not getting something done in in a specified time frame, there shouldn't be a you know I, there should be a disincentive for that, in my opinion. So I, I think that's something that we, as a you know legislative body, might want to think about, as well as the administration, when when we embark on these kinds of endeavors in the future. And and I didn't mean to come across as being uh, well. I, lecturing or uh, I think you're frustrated as, as as much as we are it's just that you know we the buck stops with us literally and uh, you know we, we like to get value for I, I think this is going to wind up I, I suspect that this is going to be a you know a valuable uh, product when it's done it, it's it, my my problem is I think it could have been done for less money and I, that's what I'd like to strive for in the future. So maybe we can learn from these experiences and, and get better value in the future. Ms. Brenner, I appreciate it. Well, I agree there was a screw up. He took total responsibility. It's not, go not gonna happen again. And it's something that we do need to get moving on. So um, I don't think that holding this is gonna no. get us anywhere. No. Um, Everybody's got the same message. Yep. So with that in mind, and I think since the council doesn't have a plan for what we're going to do in two weeks, more than we have right now this evening, and there's been a good discussion about better communication and how to deal with this in the future, I would like to make a motion to uh, approve this contract this evening. Second. It's been moved and seconded. 
Mr. Brown. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion, and that is, in the words now, therefore it be agreed, in that paragraph, the word additional is replaced by an amount not to exceed. In other words, I want, I want to make it clear that this is it. I don't have a problem with that. I don't know if we can do that under state purchasing rules. Yeah, that's a good question. We don't have our state purchasing expert here in the crowd this evening. But we better hire one. Okay. Ms. Brenner, you want to have a question while they think well, about that? How about just adding a set, you know, that any, that we're expecting this to be the end of it, and if there's any additional monies needed, it will definitely come before us first. I, I think that leaving that alone the way it is is fine. Um, and if they need more and they can show they need it, I don't want to say no because we said, especially because you guys are the ones pushing this. The people, the volunteers on the committee, it's not, it's not public works doing it. Mr. Kremen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I want to support the, the amendment from uh, Council Member Brown. I think it, it, it very clearly states legislative intent, and I, I don't see any problem with that. Uh, if, if, you know, if it runs afoul of purchasing law, then so be it. But at least legislative intent will be on the record. Mr. Sadu. I think the, what we gathered, the work is almost done. It's just putting it together, and they have given this estimate uh, that it's unlikely that any extra thing would come. But, of course, you know, <clears throat> they don't want to commit, but we can make that commitment that this is it. Did you folks come to a yeah. decision about whether yeah. we... Uh... I'm uh, I'm willing to take the risk that uh, not to exceed is not uh, going to break the bank in this. All right. Okay. I'm willing or willing? I am willing. I'll accept that as a friendly amendment then. <laughs> Me too. Me too. All right. So it's moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Ms. Brenner. Do you have to move and second friendly amendments? Well, he just did since he was sitting no, next I to accept, me. No, so. I said I would accept no, it as the oh, seconder. Okay. Well, you have to move and amend. You have to move and second any amendment. Amendment, but if I just accept it as a friendly amendment, we don't have to go through right. that process. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. That's the longest we ever spent on a consent agenda. Yeah, here. really. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it isn't. No. <laughs> All right. Next thing uh, is also from Finance and Administrative Services. Um, Mr. Chair, we had a, a, a committee discussion regarding the county staff to present an overview of proposed biennium budget adjustments uh, that was discussed in, in the Finance Committee meeting. We also had an update on the implementation of the Sheriff's, offered record, Sheriff's Office Records Management System. And then we had an ordinance uh, establishing the uh, Oh, no, we, we, we do the ordinance establish We've already voted on that. We haven't done that yet, no. no. That was what I was waiting for. Oh, okay. So the next item is an, ordin an ordinance establishing the stormwater fund. This uh, was met in committee and uh, moved for approval with a vote of 3-0, and I so move. All right. So we have this ordinance in front of us. Moved. Is there a question? Ms. Brenner. Uh, yeah. Would, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Would any of this money be used for um, facilitation of the planning unit? Okay. Any other questions? I, I think just for clarity, we're only establishing the fund. We're not putting the money into the fund. That's, yeah. I know, right. but we did talk about <coughs> what, would, what could be in it. We had a whole bunch of paperwork in the packet about Yeah. So. Okay, so we have the motion in front of us. Ready for the roll call. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Satpal Sadu? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. All right, that passes unanimously. Uh, Mr. Chair, there was no other business in finance. All right. Looks like we are on to our introduction items. Is there a motion to introduce? I'll move introduction. Oh, another yes. other ordinance? No, this is the Lambert one. This is the new Lambert yeah, one. Let me yeah. pass them out. Yeah. People can see if you want to look real quick before you introduce it. Oh, I'll, I'm going to move to introduce 
all the items including this. Okay, so the motion is to introduce one through 10 plus the new Lambert ordinance. Is there a second? Second. All right, moved and seconded. Any discussion? People want to take five minutes to read a Lambert ordinance? Uh, I do want to ask a question of uh, Mr. Schroeder about the tax issues that are coming up with us. When we, uh, There's one of these items? Yeah. Okay. Well, one of, one of the introduction items. Okay. Go ahead. So I just wanted to, uh, Mr. Schroeder, I just wanted to ask, uh, can you explain how the increases in spending budgets are translated into an, uh, into an increase in tax revenues? In other words, with these, with what we're approving now, are we changing the amounts that we're collecting or that we're, we're not changing the rates that we're collecting? We're just approving the, the existing rates. Yeah, Tyler Schroeder, Executive's Office. Um, you, you're correct. You're not the, the the proposed ordinances are not changing the existing rates. What they're doing is recognizing those rates and then including any new construction valuation for the next year. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and we're not approving anything. We're just introducing it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> any other? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. So those eleven items pass unanimously. Committee reports, anything else in natural, nothing in natural resources, anything? I think we already heard from finance, uh, public works. Yeah, we had a, an extremely depressing briefing on the crime spree in the East County. And it, it really was, it was a lot worse than I thought. So um, hopefully, the sheriff is going to, you know, come back to us with some ideas and stuff. But I want to just say for the record, we got these people stealing, getting arrested, getting off on a $1,000 bail and stealing some more and getting... One guy, they said he was charged with over 60 thefts. And then he left the county in 2007 and everything got better. And he comes back and it's doing it all again. So, oh, it came back in 2014, and now it's all—it's a—it's a crime spree again. So it does seem like there are fairly few doing a whole lot of uh, criminal activity, and it's very, especially. It just seems like we need to do a better job in the East County. I know it's out there, but. They deserve some protection, too. All right. Anything in planning? No, sir. All right. Any other items of business this evening from any council members? Reports? Uh, the, we have a, uh, an upcoming, it's not an immediate, but an upcoming need to revisit the uh, flood control zone uh, funding mechanism. And I think you brought up something with the, the stormwater. So that's an issue that's going to become uh, Something that we're going to have to focus on because, the, particularly with the demands of NPDS, the consumption of that, that money is, is occurring much more rapidly than the replenishment at the moment. So that's from the flood control zone. And the second thing I'd like to remind everybody is tomorrow's Remembrance Day. And, uh, um, uh, I, well, it's Remembrance Day, and I will be remembering my family members' service. Mr. Buchanan. Uh, as Tyler alluded this morning, uh, there's been a lot of work going on in this past year with uh, the EMS program, and uh, I think we're going to be bringing some reports forward. We haven't set a date for that, I don't believe, but Tyler and I have been talking about when we're going to talk about the things that we've been working on for the past year. Um, I served on both the, the uh, oversight board, the funding subcommittee, and then the administrative uh, sub-subcommittee, I guess you'd almost call it. So, there's been a lot of detail, a lot of hard work been put in over the past several months, and look forward to reporting that out in the, in the near future. Mr. Mann. This Thursday is the 50th anniversary celebration of the Opportunity Council. I'm sure all of you are familiar with the Opportunity Council. I'm our representative on their board. It's a big deal. It's a wonderful organization, and uh, I'm excited to be a part of that uh, on Thursday and just wanted to share that, that good news with everyone and also congratulate uh, Council Member Sadu on getting 
successful uh, election outcome for himself this past week, and also Todd Donovan, who's out there in the audience, is going to be joining us next year. Just congratulations to both of you. And of course, Ms. Brenner, who had a hard-fought campaign. <laughs> With myself, And got 100% yes. of the vote. Uh, so, looking forward to uh, mo moving ahead. All right. I was just going to say that, uh, you know, we talked about water issues this evening. We're going to have a water work session on Tuesday, if anybody's interested. It'll, it's listed on our uh, website. And then in two weeks, we will actually be approving some approving a lot of budgets, potentially, and including the water budget. So the issues that Mr. Uh, Brown brought up, brought up were good. And yes, tomorrow's Veterans Day, so uh, remember the veterans. Well, um, first I wanted to ask Tyler if you could look into <clears throat> how many people have gone through our drug court and gone right back out and done it again. We, that was part of the briefing today of at least one of the, the people. Um, ooh, let's see, when was it? Some nights ago was the uh, Blaine Birch Bay Chamber of Commerce annual um, meeting and dinner and gala, and it, it was amazing. I mean, it, it's so amazing to me we, that the, it was at the Ferndale Event Center. The place was packed, and it was the year before, but this was even more packed. So I, I, there's a good community out there that's working very hard to on issues for the Blaine Birch Bay area. Last but definitely not least, yes, tomorrow is Veterans Day. I hope people will thank any veterans they see all, all the time, but especially tomorrow. I'm going to be reading a, a wonderful poem um, at the Mount Baker uh, High School for the, um, the Nooksack Tribal uh, Veterans Association has their annual um, meeting and it, it's it's so um, it really does make everybody feel better for a number of days afterwards. You kind of forget all the all the stuff that we think is so bad because other people who have served this country have had it so much worse than we have, and they're still they're they're proud to be veterans and they you know I, I just think we owe so much to our veterans and we keep for. I don't know. I don't say we. More and more people don't even get it, and um, it's it's a very difficult thing that they went through. And maybe read up on it for those of us who didn't serve in a war or anything, because every time I read more about the first and second world wars, though, just those two, not just those two, but those two, I'm just shocked at at what people have gone through and the suffering that happened, and. I'd just like to mention that because we hear a lot of people going, you know, wars are terrible, wars are this, wars are that. Sometimes wars are necessary. I'm not saying when, but I think we need to make sure that we appreciate our veterans. Uh, I just want to publicly recognize our new legislative analyst, Mr. Longman, uh, who uh, just started yesterday. And I have to say that I'm just very impressed with your knowledge, your demeanor, your professional approach. And I think that the council is going to be well served by you. So welcome. Mr. Sidhu. Well, I'll be remembering my father, who was a Second World War veteran. That's it. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Any other business? Well. Ms. Brenner. Yeah, I got to say, my father was a, been, served in World War II in Korea. My brother served in Korea and Vietnam. And I do believe that there are a lot of people still out there. So our own people and everybody else's who served, thank you. All right. Seeing no other business, we are adjourned.